Hey guys, welcome back to the Wild Dog Project 365, episode 100. Guys, today is a really special episode, not just because I finally made it to triple digits, but also because today's topic was inspired by a conversation with athletes. And, and I think that's really how the truest form of information comes out, and it's really what makes this blog continue, continue, continue to thrive as we go along. What we're talking about today is physical fatigue, and more importantly, the difference between what we call metabolic fatigue and the nervous system fatigue, or CNS fatigue, right? So to understand this, let's first talk. What is physical fatigue? Physical fatigue is the decline in the ability for muscle to generate force, okay? So how do muscles work? Well, they detect electron or electrical impulses. So muscles, or your brain, sends down an electrical impulse to your muscle and tells it contract. So let's move on over here. Let's look at this example. If I have a light switch, light switch is my brain. If I flip the light switch on and that muscle or that electrical impulse goes up to the light bulb, but the light bulb doesn't work, that's metabolic fatigue. Okay, the impulse gets to the muscle, but the muscle itself doesn't work. This is normally, or 99.9% .9 of the time, is a problem with the substrates. We use ATP in this example because it's the most important substrate we have here. Without ATP, the muscle itself can't contract. It doesn't really matter about the other ones, okay? I'm gonna come back to this part right here. So let's use the other example on this side, this light switch. In this light switch, brain flips it on, right? But there's a problem in the communication process, the light bulb itself works just fine. So the muscle itself is a healthy muscle. Everything's fine with it. It has all the substrates it needs. It's not depleted of its nutrients, but it's missing or lacking a clear communication with the brain to turn on at maximal load. So well, as we said, we have a problem with the impulse, not the muscle. That's normally due to acetylcholine. The acetylcholine is the number one transmitter. It's the major neurotransmitter in the body that turns on muscle. Now, the thing is about this, as I was coming back to over here, when we talk about metabolic fatigue, it's really easy to understand. You can understand that if my muscle is depleted from the nutrients it needs to contract, well, it makes sense that I can't contract it at a maximal effort, right? So. Um, it, the muscle itself will be achy, it'll be tired, it'll be sore, right? It'll feel like black, like, ah, oh, I can't do it. This is easy, this is easy to understand. When I move over here and we talk about nervous system fatigue, that's when things get a little counterintuitive. The reason being is because my muscle tissue, the health of the tissue could feel great, right? I don't have any tiredness, any soreness, any achiness. I don't have that feeling of doms after that workout, right? But to understand why that happens, we need to understand a little bit more about muscles and how they work, right? We just said that muscles detect electron or electrical impulses, right? And that's how they turn on. But it doesn't work just that simply. It's not like light switch on, light switch off. It's actually a summation effect. That means that the impulse frequency at which those muscles receive that signal is important. The higher the impulse frequency, the higher the contraction strength, right? So when we talk about nervous system fatigue, what we have is the muscle works fine, but the nerve itself is unable to sustain the high frequency impulse needed for max contraction. So it's almost like turning the dimmer switch on. There's not enough of a frequency, there's not a high enough frequency of continual stimulation for the muscle to reach its maximal contraction. And we're gonna find out in future episodes a little bit later on this week that muscle substrates and the nervous system substrates recover at different lengths and it's the reason, or at different times, and it's the reason why our muscles could feel really, 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 really good, but if we continually try to hit max effort lifts, we won't PR day after day after day after day. Guys, knowing stuff like this is how we optimize function to optimize performance.